Hey guys, it's me again. I hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel. As you can tell by the title, today's video is another one for the You Can Too series where I'll be telling you guys how I got an A star in A level maths. You can too. You guys know the drill, before we get started, don't forget to smash that subscribe button down below to see me weekly. Anyways guys, let's just jump right The first point I'm going to say is just like what I would say in any other of my revision videos, make a timetable. I have talked about this at length in both of my economics revision videos as well as my other maths video, so you can go check those out if you'd like to hear more about my timetable schedule and all of that. But what I would say is have a timetable. This way you know exactly what you need to be revising on what day so you can plan accordingly. What they do say is for A-levels, the amount of hours you do at school, you should replicate that at home. Me personally, I didn't do that. I had five hours per subject at school, which meant I should have been doing 20 hours of revision at home for all four of my subjects. Now, as you can imagine, I took four subjects, so it was hard for me to do that amount of revision. I did not do 20 hours of revision per week that would have been too much for me, but you know, if you'd like to do that, you can. So what I would say is make your timetable and when you're revising, this is the best thing I did, right? When, if you have a day of really hard subjects, go home and revise easy subjects, so the opposite thing. If you have a day of really easy subjects, go home and do something that you don't like or something that's a bit harder for you, right? So that way your brain doesn't get bored and you're actually being able to learn the new content because what I found was if I did a day of, let's say, further maths, right? At home, if I was to then revise further maths, my brain would be like, why are we still doing further maths? I'm so exhausted from the day because further maths and physics were my hardest subjects. Whereas if I did economics in the morning, economics was quite easy for me. So I would go home and I would probably revise something harder like further maths and I would be okay with that. So I did the opposite sort of thing. That worked for me, I would recommend you guys try that out. Timetables are brilliant. The second thing, and personally the most important thing that I would say to you to do, is use your textbooks. These were my A-level textbooks that we had to use for school. I had AQA for all of my subjects, so these are the AQA books, but it's roughly the similar thing for every single exam board anyway. Your textbooks will be the most important source of revision you can find. I think this is a completely different way to how you would revise in your GCSEs, well for me personally, because I swear by the CGP books, the revision guides, and I never use the textbooks at home at all. But for your A-levels, the textbooks are the best thing you can do. You guys will already be familiar with this if you're taking the subjects, but they just have like the different chapters, worked examples, and then they've got all of the exercises you can do for that section and that topic. At the end of each chapter, they do have mixed practices, which is basically all of the revision you can be doing for that whole entire chapter. It's really good. So let's say at school you were doing the quadratic functions, and obviously in an hour's or two hours lesson, you cannot cover the whole entire chapter. So you might cover up to like the second topic of that chapter. In class, your teachers will often tell you to do probably a couple of exam style questions because you simply do not have the time to do every single question in your textbook. When you get home on your earliest maths revision slot you've got in your timetable, you then can do every single exam question in that chapter of that textbook. So when I say every single one, I mean 1AI, 1AII, I, 1BI, 1BII. I, I. Don't just do the exam style questions. There are, there are basically different levels in your textbook. So they have the black dots, then they have the green dots, then they have the blue dots and the red dots. The red dots are really there to push you. They're not gonna come in your exam. The green and the blue ones will likely come in your exam. The black dots are just warm up questions. But the thing with maths is it's a very practice heavy subject. You need to do as much practice as you can and the more practice you get, the better you become at a subject. So if you find a particular topic in maths hard, do as many questions on that topic and you will ace it. You just want to make sure you're going through all of the questions in the textbook whenever you can. If not all, then the majority of them because that will massively help you. This is exactly how I revised for year 12 and year 13. Besides the textbooks, I didn't do that much more for my A-level revision for maths at home. What I'm going to tell you next will help you massively as well. I personally believe that what you do 
in school, in your classes will help you more than revising at home. The next thing I'm going to say is in your lessons, sit with people you work really well with. Like all A-levels, maths is so, so intense and so, so fast paced. But the difference between maths and let's say economics or another essay based subject perhaps is that when you learn something in maths, your next lesson will be built on the previous lesson. And in the next chapter, will likely need something from the previous chapter. And the chapters are all interlinked. So the further you go along the course, the more snippets you use of the previous chapters. So they all sort of interlink, especially in your second year of maths. Year 12 maths, I found really easy personally. And I didn't even do add maths as a GCSE, so additional maths, further maths, GCSE. My school didn't have that option. So if you've done or you're doing add maths, GCSE, you will find first year A level maths so, so straightforward because a lot of the content you do in your add maths is greatly used in your first year or the first, well, the majority of your first year content. It's very, very straightforward. And then that gives you a head start to revise other content earlier on. That's what you can do. Further maths obviously massively helped me too because I did take further maths. That helped me with my normal maths as well. My normal maths helped with my further maths. So that was also great. If you're doing any of those things that I've just mentioned, you'll be at a bit of an advantage when you revise further maths anyway. But what I will say is when you're in your classes, right, you want to sit with people you work well with. So for me, I know that when you revise what I revise, I learn better when I teach other people. So if I'm teaching someone a concept that they might not be that familiar with or they might struggle with and I teach them that, I will then become a lot better and I will know that topic inside out. So if you're someone like me, you want to sit with someone that you can help a lot. And if you're someone that, you know, you learn better when you learn from your peers, you want to sit with someone who you can learn from more. So for my maths, I might have talked about this before, I sat with two of my best mates, so Henry and Shazeb. Shazeb is incredibly intelligent, he's a straight A star student and he did incredibly well. Henry is the type of person who learns really, really well when he learns from his peers. His peers explain things to him better and he learns from them. So Henry and I sat together on a team of two and behind us sat Shazep. So the three of us worked really, really well together because Henry would either ask me or Shazep for help and I could also confirm answers with Shazep and I could also uh, like confirm answers with Henry, help Henry. The three of us worked really, really well together. We would help each other out and that is what I think really helped us massively. Even though they were two of my best mates, we worked well together anyway because we all were sort of similar in like the way we work. As much as you love your other friends, you don't want to sit with your friends that you know you, that will distract you or you will distract them because things can get a little bit harder and with maths especially, you will just get completely lost in what's going on. Unlike economics, for example, if you miss a lesson, you can go home and there's so many resources where you can teach yourself the theory. But with maths, there's no sort of theory. It's all about application. It's all about the tips and tricks that help you. And a textbook doesn't necessarily teach you all of those things. It has an amazing amount of exam practice, which will help you in that aspect. But your application and your learning of the techniques come from the class and come from the teacher massively. So you need to be paying attention in class. And if you miss that sort of section, you miss that thing that you're meant to be learning, it's very hard to then pick that up again. Another thing with math that did help me to an extent was that in your lessons, after you come out of those lessons, if you have three periods the same day, use those periods to then do what you just did in class. I know I said before, when you go home, do a different subject, but when you're in school, do the same thing that you just did. Like if it's in that time frame, like you did an hour of math and then you've got like an, an hour free period, right after that, do your reviewing of what you just did because that will help you as well. However, I'm not gonna lie and say that every single free period I used and I was really good and I revised in them. The majority of them, I was spending time with Henry and Shazeb playing sport or doing quizzes, like world map quizzes, general knowledge quizzes. <laughs> And it wasn't like completely useless because it was general knowledge, but it wasn't revising either. But I do also think that the effectiveness of your revision depends on how ready your mind is to learn. And if you've just had a really intense day and then you've got a free period like sandwiched at the right towards the end of the day, you can't revise in that period because I have tried it, don't get me wrong. 
I've tried to revise in my free periods when I've had like really intense days and I can't do that. Use your free periods that you know are right next to your maths to revise maths because that will help but don't use every single free period to do hardcore intense revision because your brain needs to also reboot and relax for some time so you can maximize the effectiveness of your revision. For the next point, be ready to blow your mind guys because this point is amazing, right? This absolutely transformed my life. I did a very similar thing for my GCSEs, right? But for my A-levels, this transformed it. I did this for my A-level maths, A-level further maths and physics, I think. Yeah, physics. So, the next point is cheat sheets. And hold on, it's not actually cheating, okay? I just call it cheat sheets, but they're not actually cheating. But basically, in your A-levels, you do get a booklet of your equations. However, that does not include everything you need to know. For example, in book two, so your year 13 content, you have to learn a topic about parametric equations. And the key point is, the area under the curve between points x equals a and x equals b is given by the integral of y dx by dt with respect to dt. This is not given in your booklet, okay? It will say if it is given in your booklet, in the textbook. It's not given in your booklet. And similar things to that is all across the textbook, right? They will be in nice little boxes, like so. Nice little boxes boxed off. They are key points that you need to remember, but the booklet does not give you. Now with this, what I then did was, I would have like an A4 sheet of paper with each chapter, so chapter one, chapter two, whatever, and then the facts that the booklet doesn't give me that I need to remember for the exam, I would write them down on the paper underneath that heading. So if I had like, chapter 12 parametrics and then I'd have this point down. Right before your exam or the night before, read that sheet, memorise that sheet and as soon as you go into the exam, try and write down as much as you can of this down on any part of the paper so that when you have to then go and do a question that will come up on that topic, you then can refer back to that ASAP. And that is one thing that really helped me. Similar thing I did for my GCSEs. So I would memorize like key things that I need to know right before my exam. I don't think I had an A4, I didn't have an A4 paper because in your GCSEs you don't really need to memorize as much compared to your A levels. But I remember like I memorized a few things that I had to know. And as soon as I got into the exams, wrote them down. That did help and that helped for your A levels as well. So that is one thing that will massively transform your life. It's not cheating obviously because you're not bringing anything into the exam. You're literally using your memory right before you have to sit your exam. So you know when you're waiting to go into the exam hall, you have that paper memorizing, 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 memorizing. And as soon as you have to get into the hall, you put it in your bag, you put your bag down and then you keep saying it in your head while you're sitting down waiting for the paper. As soon as the timer starts, write it all down. I'm not the best of memory, but this is what helped me because you can't remember everything, can you? If you struggle with like memorizing things like me, that cheat sheet will help you. And the final but of course not unexpected thing I'm going to be saying is past papers. Past papers are the best way you can expose yourself to how the examiners word questions, what they are looking for in the exam, what they want from you when they have a question, and the sort of marks for a certain topic those sorts of things it's brilliant for. In year 12, like I told you before, we did do AS. So towards our exam period, our teacher would print us off these booklets of past exam style questions and she would um, separate them by topic. So if there was chapter one, all of the questions in the past from chapter one and then all the questions from chapter two and so on and so forth for the entire past papers and all of the chapters. What I did, right, and this is how I got an A in AS and A is the highest you can get in AS. What I did was I did every single question in that booklet and then they had a mark scheme at the end of the booklet and I'd mark them and that is really massively what helped me as well. So the textbook, because they've got exam style questions, and the mixed practices from the textbook as well as actual past papers. The likelihood is your teachers will print you off these sorts of materials and so when they do, make sure you're doing everything, everything, like I'm not even joking, everything. And if not, you can find these resources online, you can find them on the actual exam board websites and there's so many things. Just type in like past papers of a certain topic and loads of things will come up. Or if not, you can just ask your teachers to do this for you and the likelihood is they will do this for you. So 
that is also what really will help you. So to wrap things up in a nice little nutshell, the key takeaways from this video is first things first, your textbooks, these will be your best friends for A-level maths. They will massively help you. And of course, if you'd like to, use a whiteboard to do your practice questions out if you like to, if that helps does help usually. What you do in class is just as important if not more than what you do at home because things are so fast paced. Listen to the teachers, sit with people you can learn from and sit with people who you work well with, don't get distracted. The nice little A4 cheat sheets that you just want to use right before your exam to memorise everything you're not given in the little booklet but that you need to know and then write for your exam and write it all down on the paper. I will say this though, year 13 maths is a massive step up from year 12 maths. Year 12 maths was so straightforward and so easy for me. I didn't have to revise that much to be able to be good at it. But year 13 maths was quite hard. Um, I did have to revise a lot and re-revise each chapter again and again and again. So you want to keep doing the same things again and again in your textbook. Revise the things again and again and again like every few weeks or so just to refresh your memory but yeah guys that is basically everything i did for my a level maths i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did be sure to leave a huge thumbs up and smash that subscribe button down below to see me weekly anyways guys i will see you next time bye